The earth was in ruins. The only sounds were the heavy winds moving through the empty ruins. Suddenly, however, cutting through the odd quiet is a twin pair of footsteps. Through the darkness, the heroes of the future, Trunks and Mai, make their way through broken homes in search of the time machine. As they approach their goal, however, the sky opens up, and the mysterious figure the two of them are hiding from makes his presence known. It was at this moment in the Goku Black Saga back in 2016 that the entire internet was rife with theories and speculation as to who the Goku doppelganger was. So obviously he had Goku's face, but was it actually Goku? So the theories kind of became like a dime a dozen. It's a Goku who never hit his head! Was one of the more popular theories. However, a theory that only grew more popular until Goku Black revealed his identity was this. Goten. Goku Black was supposed to be Goten. A simple, pure-hearted Goten traveled to Trunks' timeline, uh, destroyed the entire planet, and killed Bulma. In front of Trunks, by the way. Okay. Sure, alright. Whatever. I swear to god, Dragon Ball fans only want two things. Raditz to be good, and Goku to be evil. So, later on, obviously, we were treated to Zamasu, uh, Supreme Kai in training from Universe 10, and after an incredibly convoluted tale of his journey across the multiverse, he revealed himself to be the true culprit behind Goku Black. But, what if a Goku Black actually was Goten? So this was an idea that lingered about in the Geeks for Fun server for a long time, and it was, for months, uh, just kind of a joke because of how silly it was. Uh, my friend Ash, however, was so adamant about how great it was uh, that he basically forced my hand, and now we're doing this. And, you know, all joking aside, this was actually a really fun series to write, albeit Ash and I were maybe a bit loose about where the story was going to go. If the canon art could just kind of do things on the fly, like it did, I figured why, why couldn't we, you know? So, without any more waiting around, I, Warpstar, my friend Ash, give you our Goten Black Saga. To stay true to form to the events of 2016, the first episodes of the Goku Black Saga stay exactly the same. Goku Black appears, ravages Trunks' timeline, kills Bulma, and Trunks only barely escapes to the past. It is from this moment that this story continues. He looks and fights like Goku, so he started calling him Goku Black. I struggled against him for a year after he showed up, but at that point there was hardly anybody left on Earth. Mom made enough fuel for a time machine for one last jump, but then... So you would rather have fled to the past rather than stay and fight? That's not true. This is where Bulma interferes, chastising Vegeta and informing the group of her future self's notes that she found. The idea was merely to send Trunks back to get help and return to the future to save and rebuild. This seems to call Vegeta off just a little bit. Beerus, for a brief moment, seems well intent on destroying future Trunks in his time machine. The poor Saiyan is once again saved by Bulma, who appeases Lord Beerus with a delicious helping of fish sausage. Upon Beerus' demands for more, she quickly instructs the Pilaf gang to go and lead Beerus to her supply. Regardless, how strong is this Kakarot Black? Incredibly strong, Father. Even with Super Saiyan 2, I... Show me what you've accomplished in the future. Flying in midair, Vegeta and Trunks stand across from one another. Vegeta is confident in his ability to win, but for the time being, he only wants to see how far Trunks has come without him. Trunks, not missing a beat, powers up to Super Saiyan 2. As you said, you discovered a way to surpass Super Saiyan. Very well then. Vegeta decided to do the same, and skips right over Super Saiyan, matching Trunks by powering immediately into two. Before any damage to West City could arise, Bulma deploys an energy shield over the duo. Trunks and Vegeta meet in a mid-air clash, with Trunks being the aggressor, with a flurry of kicks and punches. Vegeta deflected where he could, breaking the brief clash by throwing out a rapid kick into Trunks' gut. 
throwing his son backward in midair. Trunks' fighting style was reminiscent of the world he had grown up in. In the future, with no Dragon Balls or fellow Z warriors at his side, Trunks had to risk it all. Vegeta, in the meantime, had been living with the opportunity to train peacefully, even among the gods themselves. With Vegeta the more calm between them, it was easy to gather who was superior. Tell me, Trunks, was this Kakarot Black that powerful? He didn't even need Super Saiyan to stop me. Then, is it possible his power is now even among the gods? Among the gods? What do you mean? This timeline has grown far beyond what you might have even thought imaginable. Without another word, Vegeta powers down from Super Saiyan. Trunks realized he couldn't sense his energy anymore, and yet Vegeta's confidence didn't seem to waver. They dove towards each other, Trunks opting to draw his blade this time. The clash ruptured the force field. Vegeta had caught the entire blade in a fist, though his appearance looked as though he hadn't moved out of a base form. Trunks was awe-inspired, and was brought back into reality when Vegeta sent him spiraling into the dirt with a punch from his free hand. As I thought. You may have beaten Dabra and Babadi, but we've long grown past that. You never encountered Lord Beerus in the future? No. Never. Father. What was that? I couldn't sense your energy anymore. You'll see in your own time. I want to learn about this Kakarot Black. Goku, impressed at the display of fighting, decides to chime in. Hey, yeah! He looks and fights just like me? That's right. But there's no way that he could be you. He's malicious, smug, and he was so hell-bent on destroying me and the planet one by one. And his energy is nothing like yours. Very well, then. If your future mother sent you back for help, then I'll just have to meet the challenge. Trunks was amazed at how far the timeline had grown, and was more than eager to learn what his predecessors had learned. Vegeta offered a hand to Trunks and helped him up. As the dust settled, however, the skies began to darken. The group got into another defensive stance and looked towards the sky. From the spot where Trunks had arrived, through the time machine, a rift had opened, crackling with a dark and unreadable energy. From that void, a figure emerged. True to Trunks' word, his identity was almost exactly like that of Goku's. Only this one wore a smirk of contempt. So this is where you've been hiding, huh? Trunks goes to draw his sword yet again and charge the threat, but Vegeta stopped him. Because Goku had already beat him to it. So you're the one they call Goku Black. I heard you're pretty strong. Goku Black tilted his head, looked almost confused for a moment but then refocused with an amused smile. Goku felt it too. It was wrong to call him Goku Black. Something about him was so familiar. Despite Saiyan aging being incredibly slow, the doppelganger was well son Goku's junior. Goku would have blurted it out himself if Goku Black didn't respond faster. You are mistaken, son Goku. Really, Trunks, Goku Black. Well, I suppose that is quite understandable, but Son Goku, do you not recognize me? I am quite hurt. I am your son, after all. I am Son Goten. Future Trunks didn't know who Son Goten was, but made the instant assumption that he had some sort of relation to Goku. The air was tense enough that Trunks' sword could have sliced it to ribbons. Then Goku spoke. If you're Goten, why are you talking like that? You what? And what's this about you destroying the future? The Goten I know wouldn't do anything like that. You're definitely him. You've got his energy. But something's really got you all messed up, son. That was just necessary justice being handed out. You don't have to fight. I am only here for trunks after all. But if you so desired, then sure. I'll take the challenge. Goten or not, you've done some pretty messed up things. 
And I'm not gonna let you keep it up, son! The battle began not long after. Goku charged forward, but quickly found his initial attack countered. Goten grabbed Goku's fist, twisting it back before sending him skyward with an upward kick. In the upper hemisphere, Goku powered himself up to Super Saiyan and shot down to battle the time-traveling doppelganger once more. Without powering up to Super Saiyan, Goten met Goku's strikes with his own, and took some of the Saiyan's more serious attacks with minimal ease. As Goten Black powered up, Goku became visibly confused for just a moment. Refocusing on the battle, he briefly had time to raise his arms and defend against an explosion of ki that Goten released from his body. Down on the ground, the group of bystanders were watching sternly, wondering if Goku had this. They were joined shortly after by Beerus and Whis. Who's Goku fighting now? I'm trying to enjoy my snack. Oh my. It seems the doppelganger that the future Trunks spoke of arrived. We couldn't possibly have been gone that long. Back in the air, Goku was finally beginning to make headway against his weird evil son, after nearly frying him with a quickly employed instant transmission Kamehameha. No more words to exchange, they clash again. Goku felt odd about the energy he was sensing, and he was trying to put a finger on it, but the fight was getting much too intense. He turned his attention back to his next move rather than his confusion. While Goku fought to test the waters against his new opponent, Goten's manner of fighting was more... fluid somehow. He fought like he had done this before. This confidence in his overall moveset and abilities made him open to slipping up, which was an advantage that Goku exploited immediately, landing a jab to the face, followed by an axe handle kick back down out of the upper atmosphere. Goten caught himself before he hit the ground, in definite view of the group below. He growled a bit. Trunks and Vegeta looked on in shock. While he couldn't feel the exuding god key, Vegeta could, and he was uh, underwhelmed. Goku charged down to meet his opponent head on, and then stopped too when he felt the application of god key. You're much stronger than you should be. No matter, I'm only getting started. That was when the Saiyan took note of the bystanders their fight had accumulated. A look of confusion and slight fear passed across Goten Black's face as he realized he was being watched by both the God of Destruction and his attendant. Why are they here? They really have befriended the mortals. Goten Black held his hand forward and let his will over the time ring force it to transport him. He gave Trunks a death stare before he disappeared back through the rift he had created completely. Beerus and Whis looked stoic as they noted his time ring in particular eerie. The threat was gone, and Goku looked disappointed. On one hand, he didn't get to finish the fight, and on the other, his son from another world was the one responsible for the devastation of Trunks' world. Goku, that's... your son? It's not what you think, boy. From what I can gather, the other boy is like you. Yeah, our Goten isn't like that at all. It was at this moment that Beerus intervened. Why is it that whenever anything happens to my universe, it's always this planet at the center of it all? Regardless, it seems we have less to worry about than we might have thought. What do you mean? He's got plenty of muscle for a mortal, but his attempt at a trump card was pathetic at best. You felt it too? It felt like he barely had any control over his godly key. Which means stopping him in the future will be unbearably easy. That might be, but I say hell no! Lord Beerus? Why? Yeah, come on! Trunks needs our help, and that's... my son! And the two of you forget that the King of All has his eyes on both of you. Letting you go would be one of the worst decisions I could make. Lord Beerus is correct. Letting you travel to the future would be a poor decision, given the circumstances. Vegeta looked stoic, but those who knew them would easily realize he was furious on the inside. Regardless, he was making plans, internally. Goku, on the other hand, looked more outwardly upset, and looked back at Trunks apologetically. Trunks, in the meantime, appeared the most outwardly hopeless. He had come back to the past for help, and yet, here he is not allowed to receive any. Beerus, seeming satisfied that he had gotten through to them, continued. Now... There's more to attend to. For example, Whis, you saw it, didn't you? 
Indeed I did, my lord. Goku's son had both a Patara earring and a time ring. I'm well aware of the Patara, but I've never heard of the time ring. Whis explains the nature of the time ring stating that it must be the reason for Goten Black arriving in this timeline and in Trunks' timeline. But I thought only the Kais had stuff like that! Why would Goten be walking around with them? That's what I would like to know, which brings me to my last order of business. I want you, Trunks, and your time machine out of this timeline immediately! Uh, I only had the fuel for the one trip here. That's where I come in. I'm sure I can create more fuel, but I'm not sure how long it'll take. Since I'm feeling benevolent, I will leave it there. As soon as this woman can make more fuel, I want you out of this timeline. In the meantime, you can work on your own strength for when you go back to where you come from. I'm going to visit the Supreme Kai, and Goku, you're coming with me. What? Why me? If this time-traveling nuisance is your son, I want your input on this. And I'm not going to turn my back and let you go running off into the future. Now let's go. With that, Whis, Beerus, and Goku take their leave. Bulma pats Trunks on the shoulder comfortingly, setting off to get started on getting his time machine up and running. As Trunks sat in silence, confused and worried, Vegeta stepped closer to him imposingly. Trunks, I can't come with you back to the future. But I'm not about to let you run off in the state you're in. You and I are going back to the time chamber. Oh yeah, the time chamber. Oh no, you don't. Trunks and Vegeta popped to attention immediately, even though Bulma was over 15 yards away. Trunks just got back from a world of hurt. You can train all you want, but you need to give him some time to rest first, Saiyans. All you ever think about is fighting. And with that, the future Trunks is given a chance to explore the timeline he had saved. Having sensed the fighting, Piccolo and Krillin arrived and greeted Trunks happily. Trunks was overwhelmed to see the friends he had made again, and learn about what they had been up to in the time he'd been away. It was Krillin who decided to fill him in on what happened after the Cell Games. After having heard the news of Trunks' return, however, many of the fellow Z Warriors had returned to greet him. So the warrior was sensing key signatures he never even thought he would feel again. Ken Shinhan, Yamcha, even Hercule was still around. One of the most surprising faces among them was Majin Buu. Trunks had never actually seen the pink monster in person. Needless to say, he was surprised. Not a surprise, however, as when he turned around to find himself face to face with an old enemy, Android 18. Instinctively, Trunks lashes out and reaches for his sword. The entire welcoming party went dead silent, caught off guard by the sudden turn of events. The blonde-haired girl released the hand of a young girl that she was standing next to, and calmly moved the girl behind her leg. Android 18 steps closer, stone-faced, and then she puts her fist out. With assurance from the partygoers and Krillin, Trunks realizes that this version of 18 wasn't his enemy anymore. Krillin really went as far as to tie the knot with her? With a nervous laugh, he reached his fist out and hit hers as well. The mood quickly returned to Joyous before a late attendee finally arrives. Trunks! Taken aback a bit, Trunks almost didn't recognize who he was talking to, but the energy signature gave it away pretty much immediately. He was a lot taller now, with really long hair. It was quite literally a sight to behold. This Gohan would have been just as old as the future Gohan. Gohan! I can't believe it's you! You, uh, grow your hair again. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I have. Between training with Piccolo and my job, I just haven't had a lot of time to get it cut. But enough about me, how are you? What brought you back to our timeline? It's, uh, a bit of a long story. Well, why don't you tell me while we walk? My house isn't too far away, and I'd love it if you got to meet my family. A family? Trunks was once again caught off guard. When Gohan went Super Saiyan 2 before, it was so unruly and wild. Raw energy barely contained in a human form. But compared to that time he'd seen him last, Gohan's power had grown exponentially. Now it was refined, controlled, and even then still overwhelming. You coming, Trunks? Oh, right. No time to think. Trunks moved after Gohan soon after. 
Gohan's house was certainly no capsule core, but Trunks was pleased to see Gohan was living so comfortably. As they were at the door, Gohan began to fumble for his pockets. Uh, hey, I think I left my keys in the house. Could you knock for me real quick? Trunks taps the door a few times. Afterward, the door swings open to reveal the present Trunks, standing there with his arms folded, trying to look far more mature than he actually is. Oh, hey there, Trunks. What are you doing here? Babysitting. Babysitting? I thought Fidel was home. Wasn't this supposed to be a playdate? Ugh. Whatever. Are you coming in or what? The two half Saiyans enter, with the present Trunks rushing off to go rejoin the Pilaf gang in Goten. Trunks laughs awkwardly, and upon entering the living room, is greeted by Videl, who wrestles Pan away from the other kids. Trunks, this is my wife, Videl. Videl, this is Trunks. He's the same as that Trunks, but from the future. He came back to help us fight the androids a long time ago. The baby Pan in her arms had been transfixed on the lavender-haired warrior, and sensing an opportunity, she lashes out, snagging the locks in her bare hands and laughing. The trio of adults took a seat at the table. Gohan fetched them all something to drink, and with that, Trunks explained what had happened in his future, before informing them of the identity of his attacker. Gohan nearly chokes. What? Goten? Huh? Did you need something, big bro? Uh, no, um, no, it's nothing. Go ahead and keep on playing. I'm not in trouble, am I? Not yet, you aren't. Trunks receives a swift smack across the back of his head for that. Mark Goten wouldn't do that. It just doesn't make sense to me. Trunks looks back towards the group. Sure enough, the Goten and Trunks in this timeline were getting along quite swimmingly. They were on the same team in a kart racing game and decimating the Pilaf gang. Trunks, feeling a little bad for getting them on this topic, decides to change the subject. So, you're a scholar now. The Gohan from my timeline also talked about wanting to be one, so it's great to see you pursued it. But you mentioned training a bit of Piccolo too, right? Hey, yeah, when Frieza came back to life! Again? Yeah, I couldn't do anything about it. I came to realize that even if I'm not pursuing absolute strength, I need to at least be strong enough to protect those dear to me. If everything fails and my dad can't win, I'm gonna need to step up and do what I have to do. You can understand that too, right, Trunks? Gohan's resolve is clear as day. Trunks wasn't entirely sure what to say next, but he smiles. I do. I understand completely. In the meantime, the present Trunks was feeling a little miffed. I don't get it. You mean, you don't get you? No, I just... This guy just shows up and he's so cool! My dad even said he was going to take him into the time chamber. Well, that's kind of lame, but you said he was going to be gone soon, right? Can we just go play now? But Trunks ignores Goten's complaints. Instead, he's formulating a plan in his head. Hmm. Ah! <laughs> Goten, I've got an idea. Let's show him how cool we can be! Goten very obviously didn't really want to go along with it, but he got his friend's meaning. The two approach the table of adults. Hey, future me! Huh? Hey, what's up? I bet you can't do this! Standing spaced apart, the two teenagers begin an awkward but well-coordinated and familiar dance. You... Jin... Ha! Oh boy. Goten! Trunks! Makes Goten! And we're gonna show you just how cool we can be! So tell me, Future Trunks, can you do this? Moving quickly outside, Gotenks faces off with Future Trunks, with Gohan joining them just a moment later. <laughs> but you can't fuse like we can, which means I bet you can't do this either! Galactic Donut! What the? Gotenks then spent the next hour demonstrating to Future Trunks the peak of his power and movesets. And even after defusing, the two bore witness to some of Trunks' moves he had picked up in the future. By the end of it, present Trunks had a deeper respect for his future counterpart. It helped smooth his ego out knowing there were things that he could do that his future self couldn't. As the sun begins to set, however, Goten and Trunks get to go home. The future Trunks was about to return to Capsule Corp, but something was still bugging him. 
My father and yours said they could easily stop Goten in the future. But Lord Beerus said they weren't allowed to go. Father's going to try to train me as best he can over the next year. But I don't know if that'll be good enough. He's unpredictable and a dangerous opponent. If I fail, then everything I fought for, the world I've tried to rebuild will. Gohan puts a hand on Trunks' shoulder. Listen, Trunks. You're strong. A hero, even. But even so, if there's anything I can do to help you, then please, don't hesitate to ask. Trunks is filled with nostalgia for a different time. No matter the timeline, Gohan was something else. They spoke a bit more, Gohan's courage giving the future say and hope, before Trunks returned for much-needed rest. At the crack of dawn the next morning, however, Vegeta wakes him. Without much more words, the two traveled to the lookout. Dende greeted them warmly, wished them good luck, and with that, the two entered for a day of intense training. After Majin Buu, we thought we were safe. We were wrong. Lord Beerus arrived on a whim, searching for a battle with a Saiyan legend. The Super Saiyan? No. Lord Beerus was searching for the Super Saiyan God. Kakarot stepped up. Five pure-hearted Saiyans lent their energy to him, and he became the Super Saiyan God of Legend, and yet again saved us all. So what are you telling me? I too have learned this power, through my own training with Whis. I can't go back to the future with you, so this is all I can do. I'm not Whis, but over the next year I will do what I can to teach you the legend of Super Saiyan God. Prepare yourself. In the future, however, Goten Black had returned where he had first left. He glanced around, checking to see if he was alone, and then he sighed. So he successfully fled to the source of it all. And not only are Goku and Vegeta far more powerful than they should be, but the god of destruction is on their side too. If he makes it back, I might be in trouble. Oh, perhaps I should get help then. I can't be too careful. Not when I'm so close. Mark my words, Trunks. Your crimes against me will not go unpunished. Goten levitates up into the air and zooms off into the distance, vaporizing a mountain for good measure. The tremors and explosion rang loud across the land, and in the rubble of Capsule Corp, the future Mai stirred in her unconscious state. Back in the present, five months had passed in the time chamber. Focus. Close your eyes if you must. Breathe. Block out any idle thoughts you may have. Think only of what you need to do. Any fraction of key slips out, and it's over. You won't even enter the blasted form. His words were encouraging, but still harsh. You're not focused, are you? You can't even do that! God, how tragic. Naive elected not to answer me! The audacity! How do you expect to get stronger if you can't even follow simple instructions? If you would let me concentrate... And you think your enemy will? Trunks very clearly understands his father's intention, but he was still incredibly frustrated. I get it. It's just that. We've been here for five months already. Now no closer to getting as strong as I have to be to save everyone. Who's to say I'll ever be strong enough? You're my son, boy. Don't forget what you've toiled for in the years you've been away. You are Saiyan royalty. It's in your nature to shatter your limits. He was taken aback by the almost affectionate words from his father. It certainly wasn't like this the last time they had been in here. You've changed a lot, father. Is that so? Trunks lets out a well-meaning laugh, finding the brief lack of composure funny in its own certain way. Then Vegeta speaks again. In these past few years, I've come to realize why no matter how many times I struggled and shattered my body, Kakarot continued to surpass me. It was not because of my own inability, but something else, Trunks. True power. 
and with that, we fade. A whole day has passed, one whole year in the time chamber. At Capsule Corp, Bulma, in one day, had produced a fresh batch of fuel for the time machine. She was a little upset, though, understandably. She really wanted to spend more time with her future son, especially after everything he had gone through. Instead, that no-good lazy cat had thrown a massive wrench in her plans. Now here she was working diligently just to send her son back after everything he'd endured. And he couldn't bring Goku or Vegeta. Bulma thinks. Think, Bulma, think! There had to be a way to help Trunks. Beerus had explicitly banned Goku and Vegeta from traveling to the future. But... You're a genius! Bulma makes a phone call. It was going to be a tough sell but she was certain the plan she had was genius. A couple of hours passed, and Vegeta and Trunks returned. It was unfortunate that their time was so short, but the time machine was more than ready for another trip. She explained her plan to the duo. Vegeta seemed to be satisfied with it. Trunks was noticeably worried, but he still agrees. I'll be sure to let you all know how it goes. And Father, I, I may not have... I'm only a student of Whis myself. You may not have grasped it in its entirety, but you know what you have to do. Just remember what I taught you. Remember what you've toiled for. I... I will. And be safe. You've got this. Here, and take these. Goku left them when he was here last. I'm sure he won't mind. Bulma hands him a bag of senzu beans that Goku had left and gave him a hug. Trunks was nervous but filled with resolve. Beerus definitely wouldn't like the plan, but he was grateful to his mother for putting in the request for him. With that, they disappear from the present and return to the future. It was just as desolate and depressing as Trunks had remembered, but he looked at it with new hope. He was a lot stronger now, far more than when he had left. So, this is it. This is my home. This is what he did to it. There's so few of us left, but I know if we work together, we can save it. I didn't know you would do this, but thank you for coming with me, Gohan. <laughs>